Today we're going to take a look at one of the main uses of main stage and it's basically customizing the layout. Now what you have here is a finished example of what you can do with main stage and we're going to kind of approach it from uh, this method in part one here where we're basically going to replace a $4,000 workstation with our $30 main stage software and a MIDI keyboard. So this is the end result of what you'll see. We'll have eight tracks that we can use. Um, each one you can turn on or off at a moment's notice, either by clicking or hardware controls. Um, and you can drag up and down to change volume and change levels. You can have all eight sounds going at one time or just a few, depending on what you want. Um, so this is our end goal. I'll show you all the steps it took me to, to get here. Um, and then in part two, um, we'll do it based uh, more on the hardware that you have instead of just kind of this dream setup and replacing a workstation. So let's first start by just uh, making a new blank uh, project. We're going to kind of start from scratch here and really just kind of build our own. Um, there's a bunch of templates you can pick from, but we're just going to start um, with uh, just a real, real basic one to get going here super uh, minimalist um, because what we're ultimately going to do is delete everything and, and start over. Um, we want to start in the layout screen here and we're just going to click here. I'll do command A to select all and just simply delete so we have a truly a blank slate here. And kind of what we're going to do is uh, like, as if we we're designing a brochure or a poster, we're going to start with our foundational elements um, in this layout section and then we'll move to edit later as we map our sounds. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is use this bottom section here. And we have a bunch of different controls um, that are all uh, set up for us. Under grouped controls here, we have a bunch of keyboards. I'm going to grab an 88 note keyboard and just kind of throw that in. And it's got uh, sizing options um, and everything right away so I can move it around on there. If I grab a corner, um, I have the ability to kind of shrink it um, back and forth. And notice I have a hand here. Um, to select uh, multiple objects as well. So you can kind of move this to your heart's content, change the angle, um, just really kind of display it however uh, you see fit. Uh, so for me in our workspace here, um, we're just simply going to um, center it and then kind of work with it from there. And so after we have our object centered here, I want, what I want you to do is get in the habit of labeling it. So now that I have this selected, I can come over uh, here and I can just type in um, whatever I'd, I'd want it to be um, here, and that's ready to go. And then for our purposes here, it's going to be up to eight voices. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and grab um, a sustain pedal, and we can find that under the shelf controls, and we're just going to simply drag that over, uh, place that, because I visually like to see when uh, I hit my sustain pedal to make sure that main stage is following me along with me here. So that's already named, so we're ready to go labeled that and so now we're going to go back to the group controls here um, and we can add um, some buttons here we have the grouping of eight buttons to go with and these are going to be our on and off switches so i'm going to go ahead and drag that over grab the handle stretch it out so that fits kind of adjust some things there just for our layout purposes and that'll be good there and now we're going to start labeling here now with the labels you can really go with whatever um, you want to do here um, for me um, I'm gonna kind of label these by the sounds that I'm gonna produce um, and, and work with um, and so it's just simply gonna be the the, um, the label um, that I want um, here do nothing but add a hardware label of piano and then you'll notice that'll uh, sit and, and fall right there for us here. So now I'm just going to kind of continue and go through all these things. Uh, label this uh, with roads. Change this text label to nothing but add the hardware label so I can clearly see um, what I want here. And I'm just going to continue through the rest of these patches right here. Now that I have my buttons all labeled, um, what I'll end up doing now is add some faders to here so I'll have volume control right on screen. Now you'll notice I have um, some actual sounds here, but then I also have uh, things like effects. It's really up to you what you want to call these and how you want to use them. Just for our quick example here, I'm going to uh, have a couple effects uh, plus a few different uh, sounds to play with. And I have a nice little to be announced uh, depending on what I might want to feel for a particular song or set later on. So now that I have my buttons, I'm going to go ahead and grab eight vertical faders. 
I'll bring those right up in here. Go ahead and drag to expand so that fills up um, visually our screen. And I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to label um, all these. We'll call this piano volume. And uh, I like to do the same thing. Uh, nothing uh, to display um, here. Actually, you know what? Let's do a value um, for that. And what that'll simply be is a value for the um, volume so we can visually see a decibel letter, a level later on um, plus uh, um, see how it maps to the actual piano later on. So I'm going to continue um, through all these. I'm just going to save a little bit of time where I'll select all of these guys just by holding down the shift and then we're going to say that these are all going to show the value um, over in here and then uh, the, uh, just for my sake of organization um, I'm just going to add my labels here. Actually, while we're at it, I'm actually changing my mind. I'm going to go ahead and change this one here, and we'll call this the master. Awesome. Now, if you want to get crazy, you can go here, change some colors, and do a lot of different styling for here. It's totally up to you how you want to purpose that. Um, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple for our needs today. Um, the other thing I like to do is uh, use this top space um, for what I call header info. Um, so I'm actually going to take uh, this stuff here and I'm just going to shrink it down just a little bit to give us a little bit more room um, to, to work with. And uh, I like to have some uh, certain uh, consistent information um, in every main stage project I have. And so there's a, a couple things that we'll end up doing um, in here. Um, we're going to go to our panel controls um, over here. And we're just going to take a background, slide up here, just give a little depth to our header. Uh, you can align it, make sure it looks good. A lot of different styling for things. Again, the personal preference for what you're looking for. Uh, on here, I'm just going to keep mine nice and simple. Nice little gray background. And now um, I'm going to add some text in here. So throw some text in. And this is going to be the CPU level. I have a, a control for that. Change my font. So standard styling things that you'd get anywhere. Um, it's all it's all kind of the same. Here, make sure you highlight your text first, of course. And I like the whole Helvetica canoe light. I'll do that. Okay. Just kind of shrink that to give us a nice little label. And I don't want the frame there. Okay, so just the uh, styling that we have. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that with Command D. And uh, then we'll have um, another label that we'll throw in here. And this will be our MIDI input, so we can register that later. So right now, just some simple text labels. Okay. And then uh, for the actual controls that we're going to use, just have some buttons here that we'll add. I'm going to add this MIDI activity and basically what that does is anytime MIDI information is sent from my hardware to the software it's going to flash and light up so we know when signals are actually being sent. I like the visual of that there. Um, and then we also have uh, some other ways of, of displaying information. Here I have some meter type things and all that. I'm going to use the horizontal meter here um, to show us how our computer is doing from a performance standpoint. Because um, if you got a lot of things running on your computer, you don't want it to overload, this gives you a nice visual to show you all that. Um, so label this computer. Um, it's a horizontal meter, and I don't want it showing anything here, just the meter. And I'll just size this appropriately here. There we go. Nice header information there. And then the, the final thing I like, just because it looks cool, is this VU meter. I'm going to throw this over in the corner. Um, it's just another way to visually see um, your master volume. I think it looks cool with the vintage stuff there. We'll say nothing there. And just kind of shrink that. Cool. All right, so now we have a nice little header uh, information there. So we have our, our basic layout is all set. Um, we customize, we duplicate it, and once you're happy with the look here, uh, that's what this screen and layout is all about. You're just controlling the look of how you want to control the sounds once you get into main stage. 
And so now that we're done with this, we're going to head to the edit panel over here and really map the sounds and do most of the control. And so now that we're in edit, we'll see they load a patch for us right away. Um, you'll notice I have all these exclamation marks because none of these layout objects that we've added are mapped to anything. Uh, they're just blank buttons really at this point. And so what we're going to do is actually going to delete this uh, classic electric piano. And we want to work exclusively in the, the concert level for this particular template. Because the way this template is designed is that all of these sounds and all of these options are available no matter what we're doing in this particular uh, main stage template. And so I want to do it at this concert level so that everything I do here will translate no matter what I end up doing later on. And so we can go ahead and title this whatever, uh, whatever you want, just simply by file and saving. We'll call this uh, eight channel template. All right, and then we have that ready to go here. And now we can uh, do the fun of starting to map all of these different controls here. And what we'll start with um, before we even map here is we're going to add um, eight different patches. So we're going to come over to these channel strips here. We're going to hit this plus button. We have uh, eight things to work with. Um, so we're going to um, go ahead and hit eight. Um, this does depend on what your uh, setup is going to be like. Um, so if you're doing completely eight sounds um, all the way across, you're ready to go um, by hitting the number eight. Um, in my particular thing, I got one, two, three, four, five actual uh, sounds, and then I have a couple aux channels for reverbs and delay. So I'm going to start with adding five um, instrument channels because they're all about MIDI um, at this point. Add those two, and we'll go ahead and create this. We know we're creating it at the concert level, so we're ready to go there. And so we'll see I have one, two, three, four, five, and I'll go ahead and add two auxiliary tracks as well and go ahead and create those at the concert level as well. And then just like we were doing before, we want to uh, label um, everything that we have. Um, so we're going to label this to match. We have a piano, we have um, roads, and then continue down to match your template from here. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and pick some uh, patch settings here. I'm going to pick a piano. Um, I like the Bosendorfer, so we'll go ahead and do that. I'll pick my roads. We'll do the modern classic. And then again, you can pick any presets you want here. You can pick um, from uh, these presets. You can make your, make your own. It uh, really doesn't matter um, what you uh, want to end up picking here. You, you have your full uh, set of choices. So do orchestral strings. Do modern. And just continue through and pick your patches. Okay, now that we have all our tracks set up, now we're going to start doing the mapping. And so we take it just uh, simply one element at a time and choose which um, object we want to go with. So if I select this uh, CPU one here, we get to um, either map it to an object that we have over in our channel strips, or we can assign it to um, an action that we have over here as well. Um, so under um, all these things here, we have a lot of different ways to approach it here. Um, you have a bunch of um, uh, master things in this in this actions menu here. So when we're looking at our, com our computer load, we can just choose that and that automatically monitors our computer input. That we'll notice the MIDI one is already set. We don't need to do anything with that. Uh, this guy here, we wanted it to ma uh, monitor our master volume. So as our volume uh, goes up and down and moves, we'll actually see that live and let that control that. So that's just simply going to be our master volume. And now we're going to go through our tracks and do a similar thing here, where we're going to select our first uh, our volume control. This is our, for our piano, and we want that to control the volume of the piano. And then notice it's showing our dB level here um, based on what we said earlier to show uh, the parameter text. And I'll go right down the line, go to our roads volume, go to our strings volume, etc. Okay, and then you'll notice it's live. So as I drag the piano channel strip down, you'll see that 
um, visually show there. So whether I move it in here or I move it up and down here when I'm actually in the concert, it modifies the same setting. So our tracks are done. Now let's map these buttons to, uh, to control the different things that we want to here. And so for each one of these, we're actually going to have it be the mute switch. Um, one thing extra you want to do, though, is that um, for visual sake, um, to me, when it's lit up, that means it's on. And so um, we want to map it to the mute option, but let's check this box to invert the parameter range. And what that means is that when it shows as on, like so, um, it, that means it's, it's going to be um, on and, and the volume's there. Um, but then if I were to toggle that, you'll notice now the mute button is hit on that. And so um, just check that box for invert parameter range so that it flips um, the, the option so that it's more logical sense. So when it's lit, that it is live. And we'll again continue through each one of our tracks. Select mute, invert, and continue down with our strings. Awesome. So now we have all our buttons mapped. We have all our tracks mapped and we're ready to go. If I go to hit perform, we have this nice live setup that's here. Um, and then as I play the notes, you'll notice that it plays every single sound that's here. If I turn off the reverb and the delay, and let's turn off the synth lead and the pad and the roads. So now I should just be hearing piano and strings. And now I can control the volumes. Turn the strings down, add the pad back, back in, turning it on, adjust the volume, maybe add some reverb, bring that down, and then if we want to have some fun. So there you have it. You have an 8-channel live mixer that re can replace your $4,000 workstation. I'll include this preset, or one that I actually views live um, as a download link, so feel free to grab that. And stay tuned for the next part where I'll actually show you how I've created a layout uh, unique to my own setup um, with my hardware controls with both my MIDI keyboards and, and all the knobs and faders that I use live.